Hello, and welcome to Everyday Explorers, the show about two friends traveling the world on a budget. Before we dive in on our adventures, we'll have to go over a little bit of history first. My name is Zach Elmblad, and this is my buddy Kevin Sharon. We've been friends and travel partners since we met back in 1992 in our hometown of Kalamazoo, Michigan. In 2014, we began collecting footage of our various adventures for a show we wanted to do called Somewhere in Kalamazoo, which we completed in October of 2015, chronicling a trip to climb Mount Elbert in the Colorado Rockies. What began as an attempt to showcase adventures in and around Kalamazoo quickly evolved into a showcase of our personal stories and travel adventures outside of our hometown, rather than in it. With the conclusion of the 2015 travel season, we decided to change the name and format of the show to better reflect what we were trying to do, which is demonstrate how to create memorable experiences without spending ridiculous amounts of money. This first year of Everyday Explorers is going to take us across three continents, two mountain ranges, through a variety of climates, ecosystems, and technical challenges, as well as several months of preparation, training, saving, and planning. Before we get to all of that, though, we're going to spend this first episode going over what we covered with Somewhere in Kalamazoo. Of the original 12 episodes, only three actually took place around Kalamazoo. Of the remaining nine, only one takes place in Michigan. As it turns out, we spend a large majority of our leisure time far away from home, even if we do acknowledge that there are some extremely cool things to do in our home state. It all began with a bicycle trip down the Portage Creek Bicentennial Trail on a spring afternoon. This episode covers a bit of history about Kevin and I, as well as demonstrating how we originally intended the show to work. Over the country. We grew up interested in the same outdoor activities, so we never had to worry about finding someone to go hiking in the mountains, kayaking over a dam, scuba diving in Florida, climbing a 200-foot rock wall in the desert, crawling into sewers to find a geocache, or biking 15 miles on a Saturday morning. We took our first trips as Cub Scouts in the mid-90s. As we got into middle school and high school, Kevin and I took trips with his dad to Colorado to hike up Mount Elbert outside of Leadville, south to West Virginia with our buddy Mike to climb in the New River Gorge, and north to Isle Royal with two of Kevin's uncles. We started riding the Bicentennial Trail back when we were kids. A second trip takes us for a float down the Kalamazoo River. So far, this was the most popular episode of the show by far. This is the format we'd like to keep. A little bit of history, a few gags, some corny jokes, a bit about Kevin and I as people, some fun shots of the trip, and some good music to go along with it. Episode 3 marked our first adventure outside of Kalamazoo, when we traveled to Gainesville, Florida for our open water scuba certification. Part of this trip was a snorkeling trip to go swim in the Crystal River with some manatee. Manatee are an underwater mammal that have earned a special place in the hearts of underwater sporting enthusiasts and conservation-minded eco-folks around the world. The Florida manatee is at a distinct disadvantage as commercial and private shipping lanes wreak havoc on their natural habitat. Being largely sedentary and not capable of swift maneuvering underwater, the manatee find it very difficult to escape the whirring propellers on boats, 
often finding themselves severely damaged after an unfortunate encounter. Special habitats like the Crystal River have been set aside for the manatee, which also allows these types of trips to occur. Manatee generally occupy waters above 68 degrees Fahrenheit, favoring the warm coastal and inland waters of the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, and northern South America. These gentle sea cows have become severely endangered, and it's up to us as a global community to take care of our seagrass munching friends. Episode 4 is the first and only international episode, which we filmed when we met our buddy Mr. Glenn to help repair a dock in Ontario, Canada. Things got weird. Canada, eh? We didn't really know what we were getting into, but there's one thing that's for sure. Anytime we hang out with Glenn, we're gonna have a good time. So let's see what's going on out here. Welcome to Canada and the Elmblad School of Building Docks. It was a harsh winter in the frozen north, and the tundra overtook this poor boat shelter, as well as this dock, which we're now deconstructing. And I'm gonna help. Lesson one at the Elmblad School of twirling out and being awesome. No shirts, branch necklaces, big sticks. If you want to build a dock in Canada, you got to do it right. How did we get my buddy Kevin to float on water? Two jack-offs and a big steel stick. We don't need divine power to walk on water. We use engineering. If you need to get your dock off a rock in Canada, you f***ing jack it off. <laughs> Pro level jack off. Canada, you have some gross slugs. And some terrifying spiders. <laughs> Episode 5 brought us to the Blanche Hall Preserve back home in Kalamazoo, where Kevin and I were training for the season's remaining adventures. training is for some adventures that we have lined up coming up in the next few years as well as like some immediate goals too. Um, me in particular my goal is to hike 200 miles on the Appalachian, Tra <laughs> Appalachian Trail in um, September of this year 
and Kevin, he's got his own goals too, and we'll ask him about that. Here, pass the camera. Howdy, howdy. So, yeah, this training is pretty significant in the fact that we will be going up a 20 foot, 20,000 foot mountain uh, in uh, two years, give or take a month. And uh, next year we'll be going up a couple of 14,000 foot peaks in Colorado. Um, for me, you know, I guess just kind of bettering myself to the next level um, as far as immediate goals goes. I'm always trying to keep myself ready for whatever may come, I guess. And uh, more and more in my life I'm doing, to be honest, riskier and riskier things. And uh, finding that I not only need to be able to handle my own body in that situation, but um, as well as kind of have the ability and endurance to negotiate situations with other people that I've brought along and that I'm taking responsibility for on trips. Um, and I guess that's, that's kind of the gist of it for my own immediate personal goals. But again, we started all this because in Kilimanjaro, 20,000 feet, thing's got a freaking glacier on top. <laughs> it is that big. And um, yeah, it's, it's important that we don't slack. We can't. It's too high, too treacherous. Treacherous. <laughs> Sorry for my enunciation fails. And uh, you know, we're gonna be, we're gonna be choosing to go with a guide group that has us carry our own weight, our own packs. Honestly, I would feel like I was cheating if we did it any other way. But, like I said before, we can't slack. We can't, we can't go into it thinking we're good enough. You know? That's a bad idea. I've done that too many times and it ends very, very poorly. And, uh, yeah, it's not happening this yeah, time. I intend on being somewhat intimidated until we actually step off the mountain. And then maybe I'll feel like we actually did something. A trip to Hawaii with Kevin and Nicole. Here we are. Ugh. We are about a mile and a half into this bastard of a trail. A little river here. Pretty stellar. Okay. <laughs> Watch your step. Oh shit, that's awesome. All right. At least we know there's lots of places to get water. Looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. A trip up to Elmira, Michigan, around the famous Jordan River Valley Loop, covered in episode six. So here we are. It's the beginning of day three. It's our final day. This is camp. I ended up being just fine without the rain tarp last night. We're starting to pack things up. Just had some breakfast and some coffee. Here's Kevin's little area. This Kevin nest. <laughs> I found a wild Kevin. Careful it bites. <laughs> this is the remnants of our smallish campfire last night. 
and the log that we painstakingly sawed in order to sit down on. So now you have the facts. Decide for yourself. Huh. Well, we killed about three miles in an hour and 15 minutes from breakfast. And now we have reached the end of our journey. Dead Man's Hill. This is where we started, but we never actually went to the lookout. We were too excited to get on the trail, but here's what we missed. Oh, it was under my shirt. And a section hike on the Appalachian Trail with me that became episode seven. So I'm here at Gatlin State Park. Um, I hiked like four miles, something like that. <clears throat> decided to stop and fill up on water and have a snack. Um, here we'll take a look at the map. Alright, so here's where I started in Harper's Ferry yesterday. And I hiked up to the Ed Garvey Shelter right around here. It, it was dark, so I hiked about a mile in the dark. It's not that big of a deal. So this morning I covered this amount of space. Now each inch on the map is a mile so it looks like I'm really closer to three three and a half um, this is where I'm probably gonna end up staying tonight the Rocky Run shelter uh, Crampton Gap shelter is just about a quarter mile up the way <clears throat> maybe a half a mile um, that gives me only nine miles today I need to do ten every day to get to where I'm going, but I figure in about three or four days I'm going to be able to pull a couple of uh, 15 to 20s. My legs aren't feeling too bad. So, yeah. Got my maps, data book, doing some studying here, and see you further on down the trail. Episode 8 was the first trip from 2015 with a spring romp down in wild, wonderful West Virginia's Dolly Sods National Wilderness Area with our good pal, Dr. Sylvia. Welcome to Seneca Rocks an iconic climbing location in northeastern West Virginia, an hour east of Interstate 79, and a half day's journey from Washington, D.C., Seneca Rocks is a classic ecotourism location that focuses on some of the greatest geological features of the Appalachian Mountains. This ridge played a predominant role in military training for the land invasion of Italy in World War II and provides a breathtaking view of the surrounding Spruce Knob and Seneca Rock scenic areas. The visitor center at Seneca holds a wealth of information about nearby wilderness areas, the history of rock climbing at Seneca, and a trail to the top on which you can see the Outlook platform. These rolling hills of Appalachia paint a picture of the geographical barrier between the Mid-Atlantic, Southern, and Great Lakes regions of the United States in which Kevin and I began our now planet-spanning adventures. It surely is a pleasure to be in such a vast and beautiful space that has been dutifully preserved by the U.S. Forest Service and National Park Service for our continued enjoyment. Our next stop is Dolly Sod's National Wilderness Area. West Virginia, Sylvia just really spooked me. I had no idea she was eating. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 9 took us back in time to July 2014 when Kevin, our friend Sarah, and I all traveled to Gilboa Quarry in northern Ohio for our advanced scuba diver certification, exploring sunken aircraft in the flooded quarry. Gilboa is a unique place to dive. Being a sunken quarry, there's a great deal of manufactured situations present to accommodate for various types of scuba training. There's a sunken airplane, school bus, and helicopter, as well as a variety of other vehicles and strange things to find. 
The quarry is well stocked with a variety of fish species, including a school of trout that has taken a particular liking to divers that feed them with the food available at the dive shop. So sit back and enjoy the underwater world of Gilboa Quarry in Ohio. Episodes 10 and 11 showed our successful climbs of two mountains in the Colorado Rockies, which we had been discussing since episode 5, and set the stage for what would become everyday explorers. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, if you just keep pressing on. To get lost out in the darkness Is to stay there too long Get to worry that you're Come on down to the rain Feel that So here I am on the top of this mountain, and my god, is that the most difficult thing that I've ever done? Holy shit. Episode 11 was particularly special for us, because we tried to climb this mountain back in 1999 when we were just kids. We didn't make it up back then, but this time we did, and it was great to do it together, again, as friends, still, so many years later. <laughs>
coming off of that trip was a significant moment in both our lives, and we spent a lot of that time talking about what we wanted to do with this show moving forward. Now that you know what happened during Somewhere in Kalamazoo, we can talk a little bit about what's going to happen with Everyday Explorers. We're going to break all the rules and tell you right now how this is going to end. So long as things work out our way, anyway. We intend to end the first run of this show with the successful summiting of Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. Obviously, getting there is going to be a long road. On the way, we'll be spending the winter of 2015 training and planning for a trip to Cusco, Peru to hike the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu with my youngest brother, Josh. We'll be showing all the steps along the way as we prepare ourselves for the journey, mentally, physically, financially, and spiritually. Instead of just showing off our adventures after they happen, we'd much rather have you join us from the very beginning. To start things off right, we're going to follow Kevin and our friend Jason all the way to the other side of the world. Stay tuned for the next episode. Kevin goes to China. So hopefully you can hear me. We are in the Loyang markets, the old town markets at night here. Um, amazing place. They got everything here. Anything you could want. Kind of show you around here. I think they're getting snacks. Pretty sure. A lot of people here. It's pretty awesome. Creepy dark alleyway. Check back with you in a minute. Ooh, hold on. I don't know what that was. It's delicious stuff. It's like a sweet peanut of some sort. Yeah, it's sweet peanuts. Sweet peanuts. Say that really fast. You first. <laughs> 